This is Vince Russo's The Brand. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Alterna TV. I am your host, Brandon Stransky. After two weeks of having somebody join me on the show, I'm back to flying solo this week. Have a lot, 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 lot I want to get off my chest this week. So much to talk about. But first, oh man, the big, big, big piece of news. Big, big thing everybody's talking about. Harvey Weinstein. Wow. Just... Wow, man, whoo, no, what else is there to say besides that, just, wow, here's the only thing that I can really hope about this, I just hope and pray that more people are come forward with what they, with their experiences of people doing this in Hollywood. I just hope and pray that more people tell their stories and expose more of these people and we get to the bottom of this. We expose all of them. We pull the the veil, we remove the veil. We take we completely break this thing down and get all these bad guys out of there. Uh, I really hope that this is the opening of a floodgate because I've been hearing so many stories. I just actually just recently, just or the other day, just watched this video of Corey Feldman back in, I think, 2011 talking about this thing, and everybody blew him off, and now look at this. So I guarantee you there is more to it than just Weinstein. There is so much more to it, and I hope that we investigate, get to the bottom of this, and weed out these people that are responsible and their enablers. Um, and again... I just want to extend my deepest gratitude towards those that came forward on this. You, Thank you for your bravery. Thank you for your courage. I wish I had that kind of courage to be able to come out and speak like this. Thank you for exposing these people. I can't, again, I can't thank you enough for that. Uh, t today's episode, though, is going to be a major, major snowflake melt fest. People have been going completely insane these past couple of weeks, especially ever since the um, Vegas shooting. Uh, again, acting out on emotions and not rationale, reality, facts, and logic. Just people going nuts, running with whatever their feelings go. And of course, the media, always more than happy to stoke the flames and point them in the direction they want them to go. So today... Uh, so for during today's episode, we're going to take Alterna News and the Melting Snowflakes segment and combine them at the end. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of snowflake melting going on. I can I can already see the the Lino snowflakes, the liberals in name only, as I like to call them, because these people who like to call themselves liberals, if you take the term, if you actually look up what that term means, it actually doesn't mean what these people are. They just want to use it because, I don't know, it just kind of sounds right, I guess. I don't really know the history of how the term liberal evolved into a bunch of people who want to control and oppress what people, other people say, think, and do. But anyway, regardless, you are now known as Linos, liberals in name only. That's what I'm referring to you as because you do not deserve that distinction of liberal. Liberals are not what you people are. So anyway, let's get on to, we can kind of kick things off with restoring the republic. Uh, one big hot button thing that people are just kind of get, making the rounds once again is tax reform. Of course, the Linos want more taxes because they want to fund more social programs that don't really do a whole lot or would be better suited being handled by the private sector. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and say it again. 2013, I'm sorry, 2016, $373 billion in private donations or pri charitable donations from the private sector. And I never hear the number, I always think just, how big would that number be if we were able to keep our entire paychecks instead of roughly about half to 40% or 60% of them? Or, or 70 if you're lucky. Um, my tax reform plan would be, we comp since we've already gotten rid of the IRS and the um, 
Federal Reserve Bank, we would open up a new agency to be named and determined later, which would kind of serve as a little bit of the enforcers, something that would eventually start phasing out as we start letting the private charities and foundations start taking over on this. We would have, how I would reform federal taxes at least, would be to have, basically have it every quarter, you would have the option of signing up for which federal social programs you would like to voluntarily donate your wages to, their description, what they do, what the name of it is, and how much you would like to contribute out of each paycheck. That way, you determine where those funds go, you determine how much and where they're used. You know, something you know that's more in line with the way this country is supposed to operate through freedom, liberty, choice, making your own decisions, and not being forced through threat of jail time and being enforced through the barrel of a gun. Okay, just kind of step away from that for a little bit and get into some fun things. Uh, I'm going to talk a little wrestling today. Um, I'm sure, as you all know, uh, they decided to take the belt off of the cruiserweight title off of Enzo, which is one of the, which is a dumb, dumb, in my opinion, dumb business decision. And Vince said it, you know, himself when he said that you don't take when you, you the blooms off the rose. You know, there's no getting that heat back. It's gone. It's gone. Even if you put the strap back on back on Enzo, it's it's not going to be what it was. You killed that heat dead. And I just I just don't th that was not a smart business move at all. You could even putting the nub belt on him. They from when I was a from the things or the rumors or the reports I was reading, um, numbers were starting to go up. Like I like the the number I heard was they jumped. Uh, 205 Live up to the number 7th watched show on the network, and it's like, you make a decision that's clearly moving your numbers up, and then you back off on that? That's like when Edge, when they put the strap on Edge for the first time back in 06, when he cashed in money in the bank, and then three weeks later they take it off of him, even though they're starting to see the ratings go up. What sense does that make? Absolutely none. But anyway, uh, also, the other uh, interesting piece of news I'd like to talk about is the release of, or the launch of the Global Wrestling Network uh, by TNA or Impact Wrestling as they're going by now or whatever they're calling themselves these days. I don't really know. I was, I was calling them TNA. That's what I've always known them as. Um, uh, and, you know, they already kind of discussed it, but on uh, Alliance Tigers, Bears, and Disco, but uh, if anybody who's interested, they also have a 30-day free trial. Uh, I'm personally just watching it strictly just to uh, cram in the uh, asylum stuff because I never got a chance to see it and I plan on backing off as soon as that's done. Uh, and it's better quality than watching on YouTube and hunting it down. It's just easier that way. So I just plan on watching that and um, and then just kind of canceling the subscription after that. Um, but man, WWE guys, I, just, I don't know what to say after that decision to take the belt off Enzo. That made absolutely zero sense from a finance, from a business standpoint. I mean, you're in the business to make money. Why would you do something that makes you that makes you make less money or lose money in this case? It's it's just mind-boggling the way that they are trying to run their business. Of course, nothing that you know Vince, Jeff, and everybody else hasn't already discussed you know at length multiple times. Um, I'd like to introduce a new segment this week. I call it T-O-P-C-T-D-S, short for the only PC that doesn't suck, which is pop culture. Uh, 
um, as you know, if, if you've watched some of my earlier shows, I've talked about you know I'm a bit I'm also a, a fan of the game of World of Warcraft and uh, the way that they've. Oh, sorry, just one sec. That they've um, handled the story. They've done some good. They've done some bad. But I am interested to seeing where this uh, where things go from here because. How they, um, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, skip ahead if you don't want to be spoiled. Um, how they decided to end this expansion is, I certainly did not see that coming at all. I mean, not to, you know, not to try and toot my own horn here, but I, I kind of think I'm a little bit up to date and kind of good at predicting where they're going to kind of take the story having played it so long. Um, and understanding the characters. Yes, I'm a mark for it. Yes, rip me for it. I really don't, I, I, at least I admit it. Um. Uh, but yeah, I'm just stunned by how they went to end this, but it should definitely shake things up. The end, how they're, uh, how, well, lately, how I'm sure how you guys have noticed, um, or any of the player people have been playing notes, like, ever since Mr. Pandaria, they've been having the endings kind of leading into the next expansion, and the event that ends this one is gonna, I know that's no doubt gonna lead into the next one is, just before Sargeras is sealed away, he stabs the planet of Azeroth, right in Solithus. And as we all, and she starts to bleed out. And of course, we all know that Titan blood, Azeroth in particular, is incredibly powerful. After all, that's what the Well of Eternity was, essentially her blood. And now it's another another wound has been opened up. And, uh, and as we know from the audio files that were released or, or data mined, uh, we're basically going to be, next expansion, going to be uh, ex uh, defending this uh, blood from anybody who might want to use it to kind of take over the world. And, of course, also of note is the location of Silithus in the game, which is the Old God Prison. I would not be surprised to see us fighting a fully released Old God to climax this next expansion. But again, you know, things always change. Blizzard always is they're usually pretty good about throwing some curveballs, and they threw a pretty, threw a pretty good one this time around. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how they play this one out. Trailer Park Boys have finally re announced, or or actually rather, uh, Mike Smith, who plays Bubbles, has finally, an or they've announced um, the release date of the next uh, Trailer Park Boys releases. Uh, exact, at least the exact date for. Uh, sorry, sorry. Let me start over on that. Uh, they released the announced the release date of uh, season twelve, which I believe they said would be in March, coming up, and they said. Uh, Trailer Park Boys Out of the Park, which is the next release, which is a sequel to their very successful and very entertaining Europe trip. They will be going, this comes out in November, they will be coming to the American Southeast, which should be incredibly entertaining if you've watched those characters. I'm looking forward to this. I want to see, I really want to see how they handle their tasks and how they interact with people in the American Southeast. It should be very entertaining, something that I'm, you, you don't want to miss. All right, time for this week's main event: Alterna news and melting snowflakes. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Lots I want to start going over with this. This disgusted the shit out of me when I read this. 
This may offend some people, and if it does, I apologize. But I believe in freedom. I believe in being able to say what you want, do what you want, as long as you are not physically or doing it, not not just physically, but causing harm or just ain't harm to anybody or their property. So California passed a couple of laws recently, one of which I don't know why we are not jumping their ass for it, why the rest of the country is not all over them, where the federal government is not intervening. They passed a law that decriminalizes spreading HIV. Yes, the law now in California, you can knowingly tra you can knowingly transmit HIV to your partner without telling them that you have it. You can actually withhold and not go to jail for it. That is bullshit. Bullshit. Sorry. And the, and the grounds they use for it is because they don't want to hurt the feelings of gay people because they just happen to be uh, have the highest um, rate of having it. Okay, so you don't want to hurt their feelings, but you'll let, go ahead and let them die and, and continue to spread, and spread it because that's more important is keep making sure you're not hurting feelings and spreading this stuff and keeping people alive. It's, it, yes, it is a fact that it is higher in the gay community. So wouldn't you want to put an end to it by making it illegal to uh, uh, knowing to have it be a murder charge to know to knowingly spread this and not tell your partner? It just doesn't make any sense to me. These people do not think on the plane of logic. And the other law they passed is it you can now be jailed for using the wrong gender pronouns for people. I'm sorry, that is a violation of the First Amendment. It does not matter how, where you stand on that issue, regard, it is a violation of free speech. Does not matter what your standpoint is. It does not change that that is a free speech violation. And I would love to see how that holds up in the Supreme Court. It needs to be struck down immediately. The other big thing that went down is an executive or, or a, a move was made to remove the mandate requiring that employers cover birth control as part of health insurance. Now, I will say... I do not understand how birth control works. I am, I am not a woman. I have never used it. I have no need to use it. I completely get that. However, I do not understand why this cannot be solved in the free market. I do not understand why this cannot be handled in a way that you can take... I, mean, I don't understand how this can't be handled or any type of health health thing cannot be handled on the free market. I just don't get that. And if I'm and if people want to explain this to me, I am open to discussion. I have no problem having an open dialogue about this. That is why this is this is actually the whole point of this is to have an open dialogue to to challenge this and ask the questions and and get the answers to them. That's how we move forward by asking questions, by discussing, moving forward with this, instead of just going, oh, you're just mansplaining, or you're just white-splaining, or woman-splaining, or any of this. When we, we, we get so far up our own asses that we don't take the time to educate and talk to people. I'm openly saying, I am ignorant to this, but I also don't understand why this can't be handled with through, with free, free market salute, free market lace says fair solutions. And if anybody has an answer to it, I am open to, open to listening. We are totally open to listen. The problem is when you have these people that just want to go off and just think and just want to go off their feelings and just we'd rather be offended than educate somebody. And I think that's a pro that's the big issue that we have that we need to get over ourselves, get over our egos, and just be open minded. I'm sorry, I kind of went off on a tangent and not off of, off topic. I apologize. It's just sometimes you know I gotta when I have a thought I gotta run with it.
Uh, and of course, everybody's going crazy. Oh, we got to ban guns. We got to get rid of weapons. Um, here's the thing about the Second Amendment. And George Washington himself clarified what the Second Amendment means when he said that citizens need to be armed in a way that they can protect anybody who would wish to cause them oppression, including their own governments. Which, in, which means you need to have the firepower to fight them back. And that includes assault rifles. Sorry, folks. Uh, now time for the official melting of snowflakes. Remember uh, the whole Weinstein thing? Let me pull this up. There is a uh, one meme. I'm going to go ahead and close out on this. End it on this note. There is a meme going around uh, uh, being distributed by Occupy Democrats, the Facebook group. Um, at state says something to the effect of, you know, dear Trump, you know, dear, dear female Trump voters, uh, don't act appalled by Harvey Weinstein, you know, with him on tapes claiming this, yada, yada, yada. I totally agree with that. 100% I agree with that. The problem with that one was, though, is that they stopped just short. Because if they would have kept going like they should have, they would have ended up exposing their own hypocrisy, which I'll be more than happy to do for them. Decided to make a little addition to that. Wrote it down, put it on my phone, going ahead and read it off to you. Here's what should have been added to that meme. And also, dear anyone who voted for Hillary, please don't act appalled by Harvey Weinstein. The woman you voted for defended a pedophile and enabled a sexual predator into the White House and still got your vote. Shame on you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week. This is Vince Russo's The Brand.